رکس تیلرسون وزیر خارجه آمریکا تاکید کرد رژیم ایران باید نیروهای نظامی خود را از سوریه بیرون ببرد و برجام تعیین کنندی سیاست یا روابط با رژیم ایران نیست وی گفت ما با روسیه در سوریه همکاری هایی داریم ولی تصریح کرد که رژیم اسد هیچ نقشی در حکومت آینده سوریه نخواهد داشت توجه شما را به بخشایی از اظهارات روز سشنبه وزیر خارج آمریکا جلب می کنیم We have explored in the early days one area of mutual interest which is terrorism and we've chosen the theater in Syria as a place in which we test our ability to work together and then we are committed to the stability of Syria following uh, the battle to defeat ISIS. Clearly Russia has aligned itself early on in the conflict with the Syrian regime and Bashar al-Assad which we find to be unacceptable. So we're working with Russia through how do we achieve the end state which is a unified Syria, not divided, but a Syria that is, has the opportunity for the Syrian people to put in place a new constitution, have free and fair elections and select a new leadership. And it continues to be our view that the Assad regime has no role in the future governing of Syria. <clears throat> the sequencing of all of that, we're open to, as long as that is the, that's what achieve, is achieved at the end. The second condition we have is that Iran's military influence, the direct presence of Iranian military forces inside of Syria, they must leave and go home. Whether those are Iranian Revolutionary Guard forces or whether those are paid militias, foreign fighters that Iran has brought into Syria in this battle. Those are our two in-state conditions and those are shared by many of our coalition partners uh, the world over. So we're working with the Russians. We've achieved one small measure of success by establishing, working in concert with Jordan to create a de-escalation zone, a zone of ceasefire in the southwest part of Syria, which thus far is, is holding. I want to turn a little bit to Iran now and, and uh, consistent with our, our efforts to stop Islamic extremism in all its form is the proactive approach we're taking to preventing Iran from developing first new weapons. Uh, as you know, nuclear weapons, we want to prevent them from fomenting terrorism and building uh, influence outside of their borders. Um, the conversation on Iran does not begin and end with the JCPOA, the nuclear agreement. And I think if there's one thing I hope I can help people understand is that agreement dealt with a very small slice of Iran's threats, and that was their nuclear program. And one of, the, one of the unfortunate outcomes of the intensive effort to put that agreement in place is that agreement was put in place almost to the detriment and ignoring all of other Iran's uh, destabilizing activities in the region, whether it be their ongoing ballistic missile programs, their export of terrorism, their export of instability in Yemen, their export of foreign fighters into Iraq and Syria. And so while this agreement was being developed, it was kind of like we put blinders on and just ignored all those other things. We come onto the scene and we said, you know, that agreement doesn't speak to a lot of the problems we have, we have with Iran. So I don't, I don't want people to think that's what defines uh, either the relationship or the policy with Iran is the JCPOA. Iran continues these efforts. They are persistent in their efforts to exert their influence across the Middle East. And it is our intent, working with our allies in the region, to push back on Iran's expansionist uh, efforts to destabilize areas, particularly Yemen, Iraq, Syria, but we also see them in the uh, theaters of Afghanistan. The president, I think, has been pretty clear on his dissatisfaction with the JCPOA as a tool or an instrument, but we continue to have conversations about the utility of that agreement, whether it has utility, whether it doesn't have utility, but in particular, we're working with the other parties to, the, to that agreement, our European allies in particular, to ensure that we are fully enforcing all aspects of that agreement, uh, holding Iran accountable for its commitments, and challenging whether Iran is, in fact, living up to its commitments and the spirit of that agreement. Uh, we're going to continue uh, that, to take that approach as we evaluate and come up to the next milestone on the continuation of that agreement or continuation of waivers to the sanctions. تلویزیون حکومتی خشم و غیظ رژیم آخوندی را از اظهارات وزیر خارجه آمریکا برملا کرد و گفت 
وزیر امور خارجی آمریکا در گستاخی جدید خود مدافعان حرم را که با تروریست های تکفیری مبارزه می کنند مزدور خواند. نیروهای نظامی ایران باید سوریه را ترک کنند چه این نیروها اعضای سپاه پاسداران انقلاب اسلامی ایران باشند و چه شبه نظامیان مزدوری که ایران در این نبرد وارد سوریه کرده است وزیر امور خارجی آمریکا در نشستی خبری همچنین با تاکید بر تشدید تحریم ها گفته ایران روح برجام را نقض کرده اما آمریکا به تنهایی نمیتواند فشار لازم برای تغییر رفتار تهران را اعمال کند به افسود با این حال سیاست واشنگتن در قبال ایران فقط در برجام خلاصه نمی شود رکس تیلرسون ادعا کرده برجام برنامه موشک بالستیک صدور تروریسم و بیسواتی در منطقه را نادیده گرفته و باید با آنها مقابل شود وی پایان حضور ایران در سوریه که با تروریست های تکفیری مبارزه می کند را به عنوان یکی از آرزوهای واشنگتن نام برده فرانسه هم در حالی از تحریم های آمریکا علیه ایران، روسیه و کره شمالی حمایت کرده که گفته این تحریم ها نباید شامل شرکت های فرانسوی شود. قبل از این فرانسه به همراه انگلیس، آلمان و آمریکا پرتاب ماهواره بر سیمرغ را نقض قطنامه 2231 اعلام کرده بود.